All right, good morning. How is everyone this morning? Good. Good. How is everyone's, good. Week How is everyone's weekend? Good. Good. Great. Good. Good. It was great. Good. Good. Okay, good. good. It's, it's good to see you all again this morning. I'm happy everybody had a good weekend and that they're back here on today. Good. I'm glad I'm back here. Yeah. Yeah. All right, well, let's go ahead and open up in prayer, and then we'll get started. We'll go over our scripture and our books of the Bible this week, and then we're going to our lesson. Okay. All right, I'm going to go ahead and pray. Lord, we just thank you for today, God. We just give you praise for another day of life, for waking us up this morning, for getting us on our way, God, for giving us breath of life, God. We're able to move, and we feel good on today. We just praise you for that, God, and I do pray if anyone does not feel well that you would heal them. We just pray, God, that we would have a great week on this week, God, that the week will be smooth, it will be great, that we would learn a lot on this week, that we would grow in all of our lessons, God, but also spiritually that we would grow in you, God, gaining wisdom and knowledge of your word and being obedient unto your word, God, that we would follow your ways and that you would teach us the things we are we don't know, God. I just pray that you'll be in the midst of everyone's home, God. We pray for peace and order in homes and that all will be well on this weekend. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. So let's go ahead and get started. So first grade, we have our books of the Bible. So let's go over what we've learned so far, and then I'll introduce our books for this week. So are we ready on three first grade books of the Bible? Okay, so one, two, three, Genesis, Genesis Leviticus, Numbers, Numbers Joshua, Judges. Okay, hold on one second. So I'm, I'm not going to say them with you. I, I just started you off, but I want to hear that you know them. So let's do them again. Okay, first grade. All right. So, okay, let's do it on three. So, again, one, two, three. Genesis, Exodus, Joshua, Judges, First Samuel, Second Samuel, First Kings, First Chronicles, Ezra, Esther. Ecclesiastes, Song of Solomon, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Lamentations. Okay, that, that was interesting. Okay, we'll keep practicing, guys. Please make sure that you're practicing. If we're doing them on the test right every week, then we should be able to say them, right? All right, so let's go ahead and go over your books for this week. Okay, I'm going to show them to you here. Right. These are your books for the week. Okay, so we finished with Lamentations. So we'll go into Ezekiel, Ezekiel Daniel, Ezekiel, Hosea, Hosea, Joel, Joel Amos, Amos, Obadiah. Obadiah. Again, Ezekiel, Ezekiel Daniel, Daniel, Hosea, Hosea Joel, Joel, Amos, Amos Obadiah. So those are your books for this week, Ezekiel, Daniel, Hosea, Joel, Amos, Obadiah. So that's your next set of books. You have six on this week. So make sure to practice those so that we have them on the test on, so that we know them for the test on Friday. All right, second grade, let's go ahead and look at our memory scripture this week. Your memory scripture comes out of the book of James 1, 22. Okay, and it says, but be doers of the word and not hearers only deceiving yourselves, James 1, 22. So this scripture reminds us that there's a lot that God gives us in his word. And we do listen to his word and we hear his word, but we also should do the things that his word tells us to do, meaning to obey his commands. So we don't just hear the word and then don't live it. 
but we hear the word and we do it. We live the word out, okay? That's what your scripture is talking about today. We want to live out God's word and not just listen to it and say, okay, but we want to do it. We apply what we learn from the word in our lives. Yes, so go ahead, first grade, a uh, second grade. Scripture, James 1, 22. James 1, 22. Thank you. God stirs up the world. You're always receiving yourself. James 1, 22. Good. Thank you for the few that I did here. I'm assume we're maybe a little tired this morning because I'm it's Monday. I'm gonna assume that's why I'm barely hearing anyone today. That's what I'm gonna assume. All right, so let's go ahead and get started with our lesson on today. So we've been talking about Jacob and Esau. Last week's lesson, we discussed how they are the sons of Rebecca and Isaac. Isaac had found, Abraham found Isaac a wife. They had their twin sons, Esau and Jacob. Whenever Esau and Jacob were born, the Lord would, would do something different with the twins. He would give the blessing to the younger son, which was not according to custom tradition. The older son would get the blessing, but God was changing that and he was going to give the blessing to the younger son, which was Jacob. And everyone knew this in the family. Esau even at one point had given away his blessing for food, right? But the time came for Jacob to actually receive the, I mean, the time came for Isaac to give the blessing away. And that's when things kind of started to get a little, you know, chaotic in the home because Isaac, knowing that God wanted to give the blessing to Jacob, wanted to give it to Esau. Rebecca overheard. She told Jacob to lie and pretend to be Esau. Jacob listened to his mom. He pretended to be his brother. Whenever Isaac gave a blessing, he thought he was giving it to Esau. He really was being tricked and gave it to Jacob. And so Esau was angry. And so that's where we stopped on last week with our lesson discussing how Esau was ready to harm Jacob because of the fact that Jacob had took the blessing away. So he was not happy about that, even though he had given the blessing away, right? And now he's like, uh, I think I want my blessing back. So let's go ahead and start our lesson today because Jacob, because of this, yes, he did receive the blessing. His father did give it to him, but God has to make the blessing come into, you know, make it come, have come to pass. And so uh, though Jacob has the blessing, he won't see it right away. He will not see, he will see the favor of God in his life and how God is going to protect him and keep him, but he's not going to see like the full blessing because he's going to have to learn some things before he gets the blessing. He's tricking people to get it. So you think God is ready to give it to him and he's tricking people to get a blessing? No, probably not. Right. Okay. All right. Let's go ahead. Okay, so it's so much confusion in the house of Isaac and Rebecca between them two and between their sons as well. It's so much that is going on in the family. Esau is angry with his brother Jacob. Jacob's sitting here thinking that, oh, well, I got the blessing when really no. And Rebecca and Isaac probably have issues because Isaac wanted to do one thing and Rebecca wanted to do another thing. And it just is a whole bunch of mess. And so Rebecca, when she learned that Esau was ready to kill his brother Jacob, she's like, oh no, she's like, I have to do something about it. So she gets Jacob and she says, okay, son, your brother Esau is so upset with you. He's threatening to kill you. He's threatening to hurt you. So I'm gonna need you to leave. I'm gonna tell your father that you need to find a wife and I'm gonna send you back to my hometown. Now, if you remember, and Rebecca, she's from the family of Abraham. So she lives, you know, she wasn't from there. Remember, she came to the promised land to marry Isaac, right? That's not where she was originally from. So she has her father and her brother uh, that are left in the hometown of Abraham. And so she's like, I'll send you there. Um, she says, I'll send you there, but I, I'll tell your father that you need to find a wife and that I don't want you to marry the Canaanite women. So I'm going to tell him that. So he's going to sing you because he couldn't just leave like that. His father had to send him away. So she's like, I'm going to tell him that's the reason you need to leave. Your father's going to send you away and you're just going to stay there for a little while, just a little while until Esau cools off. So she's thinking it maybe would have been like a couple of weeks, maybe even a couple of months. 
but not realizing that Jacob would be gone for 20 years, actually, before he even made his way back to the promised land. That's how long he was gone. But there's other reasons why he was gone that long. But Rebecca sent him away thinking, oh, I'm going to just send him, you know, tell Esau forgets about it and Esau lets it go, not knowing that it would have been longer than that. Okay. Okay. You might just have to blow it a little bit, okay? So Rebecca went to her husband, husband Isaac, and she tells Isaac, she says, oh, you know how much grief and sadness Esau has caused me. Esau has married these Canaanite women. Now, if you remember, they didn't want them to marry the, the women from the land of Canaan because the women didn't worship God. So she's like, you know, Esau married those women and I don't want Esau to, I don't want the same for Jacob. So now Rebecca's not really telling the truth. It's true, but it's not true. You know, she's just saying that because she's trying to find a reason to get Jacob to go. So she's just like, oh, I just, I don't want Jacob to do the same thing. She's like, could you please send Jacob back to my brother where he could, you know, um, he could find a wife that from the family that would love God and that he could marry and that would not turn his heart from God. She says, please, could you, could you let him marry this woman instead of, I mean, a woman from there instead of someone here. And so she's telling the truth, sort of, but that's not her real reason why she really wants to send Jacob away. She's trying to protect him from Esau. And so Isaac listens to her and he's like, okay, we can send Jacob away so that he can find a wife and he'll come back with his wife. So she was protecting her son from Esau, her other son, right? But remember, this is all because she's part of the problem too, because she told Jacob to lie and steal the blessing. So she's she has a part to play in all of this in the way that Esau feels towards his brother. So Jacob was sent away. And I'm sure Jacob, you know, he's a young man at this time. And so he, he never left home before. And not only is he leaving his home and going somewhere he's never been, but he's leaving all by himself. He's not with anyone. but this is good for Jacob because sometimes you have to leave a situation. You have to leave certain places in order for God to speak to you and really show you and bring clarity to you about things that you need to work on. As we can see, Rebecca wasn't really helping Jacob, right? Because this is the second time she's coming to him and saying, oh, let's make a plan to do such and such. So Jacob, he needed to go away. And not just that, but in this time, Jacob is going to know the Lord for himself. He knew God because of his parents, right? He knew the Lord because his mom and his dad, they talked about the Lord, but Jacob had never encountered God by himself. And that's what he needed. And that's the same for you. You know, your parents know the Lord and they love Jesus. They love God, but you have to know him for yourself as well. You can't solely just say, oh, my mom and dad pray. You have to pray on, oh, my mom and dad read the Bible. You have to do that on your own. You have to know the Lord yourself. God is a personal God. And so he wants to know everyone personally. He doesn't pick certain people, but he's like, I'm gonna talk to them, but I'm not. No, like if you want, you could talk to the Lord. You can pray, you can have a relationship with him and God wants you to do it on your own because sometimes people think that other people's prayers for them is enough that they don't have to do anything else. No, you do have to do your part as well. And so Jacob would have to learn that for himself, how to know the Lord, okay? So Jacob had to leave home. He left by himself, traveling all the way back to his mom's hometown alone by himself. And I'm sure during this travel, he was able to think you're ever by yourself sometimes and you just think, you know, you just think about things you ever... Sometimes just sit by yourself, maybe in your room or, you know, if you're alone, sitting down somewhere outside, maybe you just ever think and just think about a lot of different things. Well, that's what Jacob did. He was able to think about things, right? And I'm sure he thought about, man, I should have never did that to my brother. Man, I should have never lied to my father like that. I'm sure during this time he had time to think, but that's why I was saying it's good that he left because it gave him the ability and allowed him to be able to think about what all the stuff that occurred and why he had to leave in the first place. And so Jacob, you know, he traveled and then nighttime came and he said, okay, I'm going to stop for the night and I'm going to rest for the night, you know, after traveling all day. 
So he stopped in a place called Bethel. Now, if you remember, I did tell you about Bethel with Abraham, whenever he first was going to the promised land, that's where he had made a sacrifice and he praised the Lord in Bethel. Bethel actually means house of God. That's what Bethel means. And so because Abraham, that's where he heard the Lord speak to him again when he arrived in the promised land. And so that's why he called it that. And so this is where Jacob is right now. And the same thing that happened with his grandfather, Abraham, is about to happen to Jacob. So Jacob, he sees a rock and he decides to rest his head on the rock where he would, you know, sleep for the night. And, you know, he's like, I'm gonna just rest and I'll wake up tomorrow and I'll just, I'll be, I'll be fine. Hopefully I can start my journey again and get there. So as Jacob is asleep, he began to have a dream. Okay. One second, guys. Sorry about that, guys. I had a situation. Okay, so Jacob falls asleep, and while he's asleep, he does he has a dream. Okay, and so in Jacob's dream, he sees this ladder, and there was a ladder that was reaching from heaven all the way to earth. And so Jacob sees the ladder in his dream, and when he looks at the ladder, is he sees angels, and the angels are going up and down the ladder, up and down the ladder, right? So he sees the ladder and Jacob's like, whoa, what is going on? And so he's like, wow, because that's an amazing dream. We all dream, but some dreams, sometimes you can tell that there's something different about this dream. I don't know if you had a dream from the Lord before, but when God is giving you a dream, you really can tell you're like, this was from God. Like it's different. And so Jacob, he's in this dream, but it felt real as well. And so he sees the angels going up and down the ladder. And then he hears the voice of God speak to him directly and he says Jacob I am the God of your grandfather Abraham and your father Isaac he says I will give this land to you that you are on right now Jacob I will give this land to you and all those that will come after you for you will be many like the dust in the earth the same thing he told his grandfather Abraham he says you will be many in the earth he says and from you through your seed all the families of the earth will be blessed. The Lord said, I'm with you, Jacob. I'm going to protect you, Jacob. And I will bring you back to this land. So the Lord had just spoken to Jacob directly and gave him a promise. The Lord said, Jacob, don't be confused. I'm the God of your grandfather Abraham and the God of your father Isaac. You know what I, who, which God I am. I am the real God. He says, I'm going to bless you. This land will be yours, Jacob, and I will bring you back. Now, he don't know how the Lord's going to do it or when he's going to bring him back, but God is giving Jacob the promise that he will bring him back and lead him back to this land. And so Jacob finally heard the Lord for himself. He was able to hear God speak to him himself. And so Jacob, I'm sure, is like, wow, finally I hear the Lord. And not just that, but when he hears God, it's not just the, I hear God and God is like punishing me or anything, but no, the Lord spoke to him such a great word telling him, I'm going to protect you. I'm with you, Jacob, and I'll bring you back. And I'm sure that's what Jacob needed in order to see, you know, because all that thinking he probably did, he probably felt guilty for a lot of the things that he did. And so, and I'm sure he maybe asked the Lord to forgive him. And then he hears God's voice speak to him. So when Jacob woke up, he looked around because he's like, man, that dream felt so real. I was actually sleeping. He was like, this dream felt real. And so he woke up 
and he was filled with excitement and he was like, surely the Lord was in this place, right? And I did not know. He said, God lives here. That's why that place is called Bethel because it means house of God. God resides there. And that is where Jacob heard the Lord in Bethel. And so, you know, he woke up from the dream, but when he woke up, he felt like the presence of God still outside in the air. And so he was like, maybe that wasn't a dream, right? Maybe I really did see that. But he know one thing, he knows one thing, he heard the Lord speak to him. And so the ladder of the angels showed Jacob that God himself, you know, still would speak to Jacob, even with all the things that he had done, you know, with tricking his dad and lying and all of that, the Lord still was there and would still bless him. You know, it's like I said, he's just going to have to go through some things before he gets the blessing, but God still wants to bless Jacob. So when Jacob wakes up, he says, I have to give, I have to praise the Lord for this. So that rock that he was laying on, he lifted it, you know, and he poured oil on it to like anoint it and to like praise God for it and uh, to give thanks to the Lord. It was like a sacrifice, you could say. He made an altar before the Lord, thanking the Lord for speaking to him. And he wanted this place to be a place of memory um, whenever, you know, he if he needed to be reminded, this will be the memory that God spoke to him here in Bethel. And the Lord does the same today. He speaks to us. The beautiful thing about it is God can speak to us at any time now, right? And so when we ask him, sometimes he might wait to tell us something, but for the most part, the Lord speaks. If we listen and we just say, God, okay, I'm listening. Speak, Lord. He will speak. That's the God he is. He, he wants, like I said, he wants to have a relationship with us so that he could teach us his ways and teach us things. And so Jacob, he learned this. And so now Jacob heard the Lord for himself. So should he be a changed man? Should he still trick people now and no. do all of those things? No. He shouldn't, right? He, he should be a changed man. He heard the Lord and he's like, okay, God, I'm going to get it together, right? We shall see. Okay. So Jacob, tomorrow's lesson, we'll talk about how Jacob will arrive um, to his uncle Laban's house, which is Rebecca, his mom, her brother. He will arrive there and everything that'll happen. Remember I said, it's the, you know, his mom sent him away thinking he will be gone for like a couple of weeks, maybe a couple of months, not knowing Jacob will be gone for 20 years. And tomorrow we'll get into why he ended up staying that long. Okay. All right. How does that sound? Good. Okay. Solomon, you have a question? How we write the scripture? It's on, on the Google Classroom for you? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. You're asking me if you have to write it today. Yes. Yes. You're supposed to write it today as well. It's uh, I think it's two or three times, something like that. Okay. All right. Sounds good, guys. Thank you for joining us for Bible today. I will see first grade in a few minutes and then second grade. I'll see you later today. Okay. All right. Bye-bye.